this video, you're gonna learn how you can level up your photography just by simply understanding the seven elements of photography. The seven elements you're gonna learn about are line, shape, form, texture, pattern, color, and space. Having a basic understanding of all seven of these elements is really gonna help your photography go to that next level. Now, do you need to have all of these elements in every single photo that you take? No. But the more you're able to incorporate effectively, the better your photography will be. Now let's go into a little greater detail about each of these elements. Number one was line. Now we all know lines, they're literally everywhere around us. We see straight lines all the time. But in photography, lines can refer to almost any kind of line. You have straight lines. You have lines that go side to side. You have lines that go up and down. You have lines that are diagonal. You have lines that are curved. You have lines that are jagged. You have lines that swirl around everywhere. Lines are just gonna be everywhere that you look. If you're a beginner photographer, you're not really gonna be paying attention much to lines. Simply because that's just not something you're gonna be on the lookout for right away. Seeing lines outside of the subject that you're just trying to focus on does take a little bit of time to recognize. But once you see how lines really work with photography, you're gonna have a deeper understanding of why lines are extremely important in the photos that you take. If you think of everything that you see in a photograph, literally everything that you see, it starts with a line. Essentially, without line, the other seven elements just wouldn't exist. Think about it. Lines put together create shapes. Shapes together will create the composition for your form. Form helps compose the texture. Texture helps lead to patterns, and patterns can help establish space within your photos. And all of this starts with a single line. Now again, with lines, there's just a bunch of different types of lines out there that you need to be aware of. Not only can you have lines that go in all different types of directions, you can have long lines, you can have short lines, you can have thick lines, and you can have thin lines. And each of these types of lines really is gonna help represent something in your photography. For example, the thickness of a line can really evoke some sort of emotion within your audience. If you see a really thick line, you're probably going to think of something that's strong. If you see a thin line, that line's probably going to represent something that's a little fragile to look at. So remember, lines are the start of everything that you're going to see in your photos. And every line that you do see is going to represent something and put something out there in your photography. Moving on to our second element, and that's shape. When you have lines converge together, they're going to form a shape. Now with shape, we're typically going to think of things that we see in school, the typical rectangle, the typical circle, the typical triangle, the typical square. All of those things are what come to mind when you say shape. However, everything that we see has some sort of shape to it. Sometimes they're a combination of different shapes that we know of, and other times they're not really a shape that we have a name for. When it comes to your photography, if you can see something that has a very specific shape that everyone is going to immediately recognize, that is one thing that is really going to help your pictures. And that's just because humans like to see stuff that they recognize, they know, they don't want to have to think too hard about what they're looking at. So if you can see specific shapes around the subjects that you're trying to take pictures of, use that to your advantage. And don't be scared to show off certain shapes and make it very obvious. Sometimes the more obvious we make something look, the better the photo is going to be to our audience. Again, and that is because as humans, we just like to see stuff that we immediately recognize without having to think much about it at all. Something else that you can do with shapes to use them artistically is to get silhouettes of the subject that you're trying to get a photo of. Now how do you get a silhouette? That comes with backlighting. Now, if you're not somebody that's really familiar with lighting and photography, lighting is one of the most important aspects when it does come to photography. So if you don't know that, you should probably try to learn that as soon as possible. But when it comes to backlighting, right now, all of the light is in front of me. But if I turned off these lights and just left those lights behind me, that is technically backlighting. Backlighting is when the light source is behind your subject, thus creating a shadow and a silhouette of your subject. So if you want to add a little more of an artistic touch to your photos, try making your subject a silhouette. The third element that we're going to discuss is form. Now form happens when the shapes that you see start to have a little bit of thickness. Now I don't mean just the size of the lines that form the shapes are thicker. I mean that the thickness is creating a three-dimensional shape. When you have stuff that starts to appear more three-dimensional in your photos, that's when things start to look a lot more lifelike. This can sometimes be difficult because when you're looking at a photograph, you're looking at a two-dimensional plane. And making things look like they're three-dimensional and real can sometimes be a little difficult. But that is why you need to understand form and how it affects your photos. And one technique that you can really use to help create better form in your photos is lighting. 
Again, light really is gonna help create that three-dimensional feel that you have with your photos. Now, why is that? It's simply because lights help create highlights and shadows on your subject, and that's really gonna help create the form that you're looking at in your pictures. And when you have that stark contrast between the highlights and the shadows, you're gonna have that three-dimensional look that is really gonna help when you're looking at a picture on your two-dimensional plane. Element number four is texture. Now we all know what texture refers to when we're talking about the real world. If you look at something, you know exactly what it feels like. If we look at this table, we know that it's smooth. The texture of this table is smooth texture. If we look at something like this that has some ripples on it, we know that that is what the texture is gonna feel like. We can see what the texture is of certain objects. But this is something that doesn't only apply to real life. This also applies to photography. With photography, we can see exactly how something might feel. And that is the texture that we're looking at. Showing off texture in your pictures can be a little difficult at times, but once you're able to capture it effectively, your pictures are gonna look that much better. This is also why I'm talking about texture after referring to form. It's much harder to see the texture of something if it looks two-dimensional. But when you have something that has form, it's easier to show off what the texture of that subject is. And one good thing about texture, even though it is sometimes hard to capture in your photos, most editing softwares will actually allow you to enhance certain texture within your photo. And when you're able to effectively enhance your texture, your pictures are gonna look a lot better. But be careful because with a lot of editing softwares, you can go overboard with the texture and then eventually that's just gonna take away from the realism of the photo. So just be careful of that. Element number five is pattern. Now we all know what a pattern is. A pattern is just a repeated form or design that you're seeing over and over and over again. Now in photography, seeing a pattern is almost similar to seeing a specific shape that we can immediately recognize. It's just gonna be much more appealing to your audience and it's just gonna help them not have to think as much about what they're looking at. Because let's be honest, not a lot of people like to think. So when it comes to patterns, finding them can sometimes be a little difficult for all of your photos. Sometimes they may not be immediately recognizable. But if you're able to find some sort of pattern and use it effectively for the shot that you're trying to get, it's gonna help your picture look that much better. So patterns are very important in photography simply because they help create symmetry and put the audience's mind more at ease. So if you can take a photo with a pattern to help your audience not have to think a lot more about what they're trying to look at, it's gonna turn out much better for you. Element number six is color. Now how you use color in your photography is really gonna be up to you. Color really helps your audience differentiate between different objects in your photo. If everything you're looking at now was the exact same color, you wouldn't be able to see anything. So color is what really helps differentiate this table from me, from the background, from these plants, from this sign, from these lenses, from this monkey llama, from everything. So when it comes to your photography, you can use color to your advantage by helping your subjects pop. Say you have a background that is completely black and then any other pop of color that you see, any bright colors that you see, is only gonna help that subject stand out much more than it would in a background that was not completely blacked out. Colors can also be effective in your pictures because they can help set the mood of your photo. Warmer colors like the reds and oranges and yellows, those tend to be much more lively and vibrant, thus creating a more energetic mood for your photos. Cooler colors like the blues, like the greens, those colors are really going to help create more of a sense of calmness in your photos. And don't think that every time you're taking your pictures it has to be in color. Black and white also falls into this color category. Yes, these types of photos are automatically going to set a specific mood for your photo, but the way you take that photograph can really add another dramatic dimension to your photos. So when it comes to colors, always keep in mind how they're going to work with what you're trying to photograph. Now our seventh and final element that we're going to talk about is space. No, I'm not going to talk about the stars and the galaxy and the universe. I'm not going to talk about that. That's not what I mean by space. What I'm referring to when it comes to photography is the actual distance between objects in your photos. Using space effectively can really change the perspective of a certain photo. You can have two photos that are taken from the same exact distance, but the way you use space and different objects in that photo is gonna really change exactly how that photo actually looks. This is why you might sometimes hear people say, shoot through objects, have something off in the background, create that bokeh. 
that's because that's really gonna give a different perspective from just a regular shot that's facing head on. Also, when it comes to space, you need to understand that there's two types of space that you can have in your photos. You have positive space and you have negative space. The positive space is the space that's taken up by your subject. And the negative space is everything else surrounding your subject. And don't think that with negative space, that space has to be plain. With negative space, it can be filled with objects. It doesn't have to be completely blank. Just keep in mind that the positive space is the subject and that negative space can be filled with whatever you need it to be filled with. But the negative space is really gonna help how your subject looks in that positive space and how it appears to your audience. So, when it comes to these elements of photography, using all of them or as many as you can for every photo that you take is really gonna help every photo that you take come together in a way that you, it may not have come together before. So when you have a basic understanding of these elements, it's very easy to take your photography to that next level. And I know, this is photography. It should be just as easy as pushing a button, right? Well, that's just not how it works. That's not how photography works. If it were that easy, everyone would be a good photographer, but it's not, and we all know some bad photographers out there. So if you keep in mind some of this basic understanding of these elements the next time you go out and shoot, you're gonna come back with better photos. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to follow me on TikTok if you want to learn a little bit more about photography and video. And that's all I got for you. I'm Steven from Dare to Capture. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.